Can't bypass that too. All right, so we've got Lawrence here playing guitar yep. and explain this chain to me. So he's playing this, what guitar is that? He's playing an Aria, it's Braxton's, kind of a funky little guitar with uh -huh. a bunch of little pickup options on it. And then we're hitting the Jackson Ampworks Newcastle. Okay, so it's going through the amp. It's going through the amp, into the ISO into box. Into this ISO box. Sontronics Halo mic on there. Okay, and turn then, the speakers down. Yeah, you love that. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Can't you even crank hear the it. volume up on it so you can hear it a little bit more. Uh, go on for the it. amp? On the amp, yeah, go for it. You can drive it more. Wow. That's an 18 watt tube amp. Wow. And that's all you're getting in the room. And then turn the speaker yeah. up. It's probably loud now. Wow. Oh, that's so much more fun tweaking the amp. Oh, what what's and then, the they, and they don't make this anymore, right? It was like a, a one man operation or two because the guy designed it and then his friend was fabricating the the cabinets for him. That yeah. guy stopped fabricating cabinets, so therefore uh, he can't do it right now. So I'm not sure. We like literally between the studio, uh, Adam bought one. Fell in love with it. I heard it. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm buying that. I had been watching one in my reverb like watch list for like months. Bought it on the spot. Oh. Adam went and bought a second one. Another friend of ours bought two. And then another friend of ours wanted to get one. And he didn't. He had a prototype left. And so our, our other friend, Brandon, bought the prototype. And that was it. We like cleared wow. them all out. And, and we were excited. We were telling all of our friends, like everybody at the studio wanted to have one because it's like you could literally have it in your room and... Yeah, you can yeah. crank that like all the way up and it doesn't even get loud. The Man. amp will start breaking up, but it doesn't get loud. That is so cool. It's And so then we can just track uh, guitar right in the world, right in the room. Yeah, man. Sounds good too, man. That is rad. Uh, okay, and then my next question was about this Equinox. Okay. Or, or, or I guess more about your mix bus processing chain. Okay. Situation. So you had a track up earlier. Yes. And I pulled you were, it back up. And you were showing me, um, like you were working on the track with the some of that stuff turned off, right? Right. D is that a normal, like because of the processing? So the track I was working on was a Red Licorice track. So with that, like, there's like a handful of plugins that go on the back end, like of the mix bus, mm -hmm. that I don't work with those on partially because of latency and partially because I want to create it mm. clean, yeah, more clean, and then make it dirty on the back. So like, yeah. And that's summing, but not going all the way back through. So the drums are hitting the first two louder than liftoffs on the bottom down there, Okay. which those are um, Mr. Focuses. They have the SSL. Uh, console cards in them and they have this yes. little this cool little uh, little jumper thing so you can do this little it's like I think 2.4 dB of 8k which is like the special sauce on the SSL that 8k oh, okay. so you can do this little bump on there so I have those like all the way driven and then I have them only mixed in at like 20 percent because I love the little grit it adds to my drums and then um oh okay I'm starting vocal to samples are going through the vocal samples are hitting uh, they come out, there's some there's some uh, UTC transformers tucked behind the back of the rack. So they hit these UTC transformers, and then they hit the uh, Pultec EQs, and then they hit the DSers. Now for that, for this, that's overkill, because it's like, yeah. this like chopped up vocal sample, but like if I'm cutting vocals, like real vocals, a lot of times that's, they'll run through that same, uh, wow. that same thing. So then the mix comes out, it hits this. I've got it on the second, uh, you know, click up, so uh, number so two on. for gain. I don't know what that is DB wise. So pause. You, when you say the mix comes out, that you're outputting like eight different channels, right? Yeah, because this X16? is like mad simple. Like yeah. Red Licorice doesn't have a lot of tracks, so right. But that's your multi-track outputting, like you would have them spread across. Like a on spread a across. Yes, yeah, spread across a desk. And then it comes hits in. This, okay. Then it hits the louder than liftoff, the silver bullet. Okay. The bus compressor, then the overstayer, and then the stereo widener. The the Edison and then it comes back in and then when it comes back in 
I have this like pile of plugins on here uh -huh. that are like kind of like the red licorice kind of thing. So yeah. you go from this. So like you go from this to yeah. Wow, and you can just switch. So. ATR tape machine, EQ. So ATR, little EQ, filter, good hertz filter, bulb compressor, acoustica. Black box, adding a little grit, crazy EQ, yeah. kind of making it, bringing it under control. Yeah. When you like roll off so much top, yeah. the bottom can some, sometimes can get a little out of control and I like the bottom to stay fat. Yeah. Um, so just like tweaking like that stuff, that stuff that gets like annoying. Oh and yeah. Then, this stuff yeah all that can fun. just kind of get built up yeah a little soothe and then just limiting yeah and that's just for me when i'm doing a rough mix i put the limiter on i just slam it yeah um just to make sure that it holds up yeah and then when it gets mastered he doesn't go that hard i just what, tend to go hard when you throw the pro l what uh luffs do you look at the luffs oh yeah what do you for you're going up here yeah. Or do you look at the reduction? Usually I'm looking at the reduction yeah. most of the time. I'll set the output like to minus 0.2. Oh, okay. And then I'm making up more gain than normal only because of the way that I come back in sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I'll come back in a little bit lower so it doesn't peak one of the rack here. One yeah. Of the rack here. That's sweet. That's amazing. Yeah. How much do one of these things go for? They're like... Or I think they're like 3,800 new, but Good. I bought mine used on Reverb. That's that's actually a pretty great deal. I mean, I want to get the Grace Designs monitor controller, which is that's four like, grand, isn't like, yeah, it's and like it doesn't grand. do any of that stuff. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, monitor controller, preamps, and then summing. Summing can hit hits the pre's, and then you can switch the. I mean, we can mess with that and see if we how much of a difference we hear. first switched to it i was like i was like oh this is the least interesting one and then like five seconds went by i was like however i think i like this yeah one. the steel has a bump i think it's like a 40 hertz ish oh, okay somewhere down it's there it's got a bump fatter. the iron has the most kind of overall saturation and then um the nickel has a top end bump like maybe like around a 10k bump that's right yeah the, and the, i usually don't need any help with my top yeah so i find myself not not adding right in the middle too many things with yeah not too much top but i love how the iron one you just push into it, it gets a little gritty which i think it's like the cheapest technically it's the cheapest interesting but something about it and then what are you using this is that's the behringer d what is that thing on the top this one left side yeah yeah, this is the, just their uh, desktop version of the um, of the Model D, of the Moog Model D synth. So I have this one, and then they came out with the Poly D, and, oh, that's that, right. and that one just adds a few extra functions. Um, it's kind of fun to have both. If they can both be set to different sound, this can be set to like a lead, more like a lead synth sound. That one could be set to like a bass. It's got an extra uh, oscillator on it, which is cool. And it has an arpeggiator, um, chorus and distortion. Um, so that's cool. And then this Matrix 1000 is just this funky old 80s Oberheim synth mm -hmm. um, that's just straight up like 
kind of the 80s in a in a, in a, a box. one rack space yeah, yeah it's amazing and so that and it takes effects really really well it's a mono output so i'll throw that through like a chorus or i'll throw it through a stereo reverb or you can throw it through a delay um to make it get wider and it sounds really cool and then there's a plug or not a plug-in but um an app called patch bass so you can open this up and it wants me to update it so you open this up and this syncs up to the oberheim so i can make Whoa. changes so i can pull up presets on here yeah um and it'll pull up presets on there and then I, and then the going like banking through here to try to edit is like insane they make an editor like yeah. an actual physical editor yeah um but this they make this app patch base patch base makes this app and they have like all these old vintage scents nice. and so you can open up right in here and it looks kind of like serum and you can make all your <coughs> tweaks and save preset sounds which That's is pretty amazing. awesome yeah so uh something that because i'm not a synth guy and i know nothing about synths but i like them Every i'm probably time the same i mess around with them yeah i this is how little i know about them i just realized staring at that that it's i mean it's there's no keys on it but it's just midi in what so it's it's like it's the brain yeah but you can just play use yeah so i just play this play this and you just go in pro tools all of all the synths are hooked up to the motu and then that usb is to the computer so it's one USB and you have all your MIDI cables They're all for your different thing to the Motu? All to the Motu. So you could play this, but be controlling the Juno. Or like this This doesn't have a key bed either. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't have a key bed. So you can sit right here. You can play any of those. Because um, it has in and out. And does that, is that only MIDI in? Can you do audio in, analog in? For which one? For, for the, the Motu? D? This yeah this has well this has yeah they all have the audio output the analog output as well right so those are all wired up then to the Behringer um, rack mixer down there um, third from the bottom but can you send audio in it does I that think even I make can sense? send audio in it but I never do yeah yeah because I have a, a little fatty that I uh -huh. sent uh, that in the shop right now and I've used that to send audio in and like do stuff with the filters and stuff like that, yeah. like send drums into it. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was wondering. If like you had like a beat or like a vocal or something and you want to just make it real yeah, weird. Yeah, that's really funny. I think I think you can, but I actually have never even tried with this one. Yeah, cool. But I've done it with the uh, Little Fatty. I, lo I love uh, using stuff like for me, I'm using guitar pedals to yeah. do that. You know, yeah, yeah. send them through that and just. And that's what I have those radios it. for so that yeah. I can go in and out and so i can use them like we could track the guitar we could take the guitar um and send it to the pedals and then into pro tools so we could yeah. so we could and then we can i usually tend to leave the pedals fully wet yep because the radios have the mix knob on them yep which i like because then also if i'm mixing and i want to use it as like a vocal reverb or something like that or a guitar reverb just just as like a mix send then i can leave it fully wet pull it up on its own fader and and use it like that right as like an ox as like an ox yeah. yeah cool yeah man awesome man thank you for showing me that for sure